Did you know the walls of Babylon were once considered a wonder of the world? Or that the famous hanging gardens may have never actually existed? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about the most famous city from ancient Mesopotamia, Babylon. Don't forget, the easiest way to support our channel is by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel so you don't miss out on any new uploads. If you like my shirt, you can find this design and a bunch more on our new merch store, which I will link for you down below. Babylon was a city in Mesopotamia, which is now modern-day Iraq. The city was known by the Akkadians as Barville, which means Gate of the Gods. The city of Babylon is so well known to many due to the numerous references to it in the Bible, although none of them are particularly glowing comments. It is due to these biblical references, primarily in the books of Daniel, Jeremiah, Isaiah and the book of Revelation, that so much interest has been aroused in Mesopotamian archaeology, both in the past and present. Apart from its mentions in the Bible, Babylon is known for many things, including its impressive Ishtar Gate, magnificent walls and buildings, the belief that it was a great seat of culture and learning, and the potentially fantastical Hanging Gardens of Babylon, built by Nebuchadnezzar II for his wife. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon were man-made terraces with heaps of exotic flora and fauna, and was considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Ruins of these gardens have never been found, and some scholars claim they may have actually been at Nineveh, while many others have wondered whether they even existed at all. Although some ancient sources say that Sargon of Akkad, also known as Sargon the Great, founded the city of Babylon, it is widely believed that Babylon was already founded prior to the reign of Sargon, between 2334 and 2279 BCE. Babylon seems to have been a fairly minor city, or perhaps even a large port town on the Euphrates River, where it runs closest to the Tigris, at the time of Sargon's rule. Unfortunately, the ruins of Old Babylon have been lost to us since the water level has steadily risen over the years, and the ruins which are visible today date to over 1,000 years after the city was founded. The known history of Babylon begins with its most famous king, Hammurabi. Hammurabi reigned between 1792 and 1750 BCE and during this time he transformed the city into one of the most powerful and influential in the whole of Mesopotamia. Hammurabi is best known for his law codes, which he spread throughout his empire. Not only did these law codes allow Hammurabi to extend his centralised government far and wide, but his subjects felt like they were benefiting from his rule by having legal rights and common laws throughout the kingdom. He improved upon the walls of the city of Babylon, built temples and increased public works, and used his law code to maintain peace in his extended kingdom. Hammurabi was able to extend his Babylonian realm all throughout Mesopotamia, and continued to hold the region under Babylonian control until his death. After Hammurabi died, his empire fell apart, which made it easy for the Hittites to sack Babylon in 1595 BCE. After the Hittites conquered the city, the Kassites conquered it next, and even temporarily renamed it Karanduniash. Under the rule of the Neo-Assyrian king Sennacherib, who reigned between 705 to 681 BCE, the Assyrians were next to dominate the city. It was at this point that Babylon revolted against their oppressors, so Sennacherib sacked and razed the city, and then scattered the ruins, so no other city would follow in Babylon's footsteps. Even the people who were meant to be on Sennacherib's side, like his people and his court, thought his actions were impious and extreme, and soon after his destruction of Babylon, Sennacherib was assassinated by his sons. His successor, Esarhaddon, who ruled between 681 and 669 BCE, took a drastically different approach and elevated the name of Babylon. 
He rebuilt the great city, making sure to include his name on its bricks, and soon returned it to its former glory. The city was still highly regarded under Esarhaddon's successor, Ashurbanipal, who besieged and sacked the city, but gave orders that no major damage was to be done. Although in ancient sources Babylon is regarded highly, the Bible tells a different story. In Genesis 10, you find the story of the Tower of Babel, which was raised at Babylon by different people who spoke the same language. This displeased God, and so he confused their tongues and created different languages, so that they couldn't finish the tower. In the book of Daniel, Babylon is depicted as corrupt, and in book of Jeremiah 59, Babylon's fall for wickedness is predicted. Also in book of Revelation, Babylon is equated with sin and pride. You get the idea. Babylon was not a favoured city. The end of the Assyrian Empire marked a change for Babylon. A Chaldean named Nabopolassar took the throne and created what is now known as the Neo-Babylonian Empire. His son, Nebuchadnezzar II, reigned from 605 to 562 BCE and renovated the city and created some of the most impressive buildings in Mesopotamia, including the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, if you believe the ancient sources. Although the gardens may have never existed, all ancient sources which mention the city of Babylon, except for the Bible, have nothing but admiration and awe for the remarkable city. The Ishtar Gate, a mammoth structure decorated with golden images, was often mentioned with reverence, as were the immense walls, which, according to some ancient sources, were wide enough to race chariots along the tops. Herodotus wrote that Nebuchadnezzar's city was 89 kilometers or 55 miles long, and that they were wide enough for four chariots to ride on them side by side. While at that time most buildings were constructed from mud brick, Nebuchadnezzar decided to use fired bricks, as they were more durable. Indeed, Nebuchadnezzar's bricks were of a quality that may never have been surpassed, even today. It is said that much of Baghdad is built with Nebuchadnezzar's bricks. And the 19th century Hindia Dam across the Euphrates River was mostly built from 2,500 year old bricks. After the death of Nebuchadnezzar II, Babylon continued as an important city under the next two rulers, Nabodonidus and Belshazzar, but in 539 BCE the Neo-Babylonian Empire fell to the Persians under the rule of Cyrus the Great after the Battle of Opus. According to one account, Cyrus diverted the course of the Euphrates River so it fell to a manageable depth and the Persian army could wade across and march under the walls straight into Babylon. The Persian account of this siege claims that they took the city without a fight, but documents show repairs being needed to some of the walls and sections of the city, so maybe it wasn't as easy as the Persians wanted everyone to believe. Babylon continued to flourish as a seat of learning and culture under Persian rule, and it was held in great regard by Cyrus the Great and his successors, so much so that they made it one of the administrative capitals for their empire. When Alexander the Great conquered the Persian Empire in 331 BCE, he continued to hold Babylon in high esteem, and demanded no building be damaged. The death of Alexander the Great in 323 BCE marked the beginning of the gradual decline of the city of Babylon, and by the time of Parthian rule in the region in 141 BCE, Babylon had been deserted and forgotten. What remained of the city of Babylon was swept away during the Muslim conquest of the land in 650 CE, and in time was buried beneath the sands. That is, until the 17th and 18th centuries CE, when European travellers began to explore the lands and discover artefacts of value within the sand. The blocks with cuneiform writing and the statues uncovered led to an increase of interest in the region, which was encouraged by its mention in the Bible. This interest helped develop biblical archaeology by the 19th century CE, when Western institutions sent expeditions to uncover physical evidence to support biblical narratives. After the archaeological work of Robert Coldaway, the city of Babylon, the gate of the gods, was remembered once more. 
Why do you think the Bible portrays Babylon so negatively when other ancient sources mainly praise it? Let us know what you think down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organization, so if you'd like to support our work, you can hit the link in the top corner of the screen or follow our link to our Patreon down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon with another video.